All right, we welcome my guy, Coach Dave Watson, in the Caps Corner here, brought to you by Great Clips. Three and ten. Three and ten at don't, the bye week. Don't worry about that. Let's just think about Justin Fields and the progress at the office, right. the offense is made, and the uh, salary cap money that we have, and the draft picks that we have. Right. That's, that's, don't worry about the record, right? Okay, now. so Charles Barkley was on the radio yesterday. Okay. He said, I am not playing that kid one more snap. And Tommy Waddle pushed back. He needs the reps. He goes, no, Tommy. He does not need the reps at the risk of getting hurt. I know that that guy's a star. I'll deal with him in the offseason. What do you say as a coach? Well, there, there is something to that, what Charles Barkley is saying. There's no question. Because of why? Because of the style player that Justin is. I mean, he's going to be uh, aggressive. You know, he, he doesn't mind contact. You know, all those things. But there, there does come a point where uh, he's got to learn to play smart. By smart, I'm not talking about football right now. I'm just talking about getting down, getting out of bounds. And if he played and executed, I mean, every week, you know, what he's gaining right now, every week is going to have a gift, different defensive game plan how they want to stop him and how they want to stop the Bears. And going through that and learning that is invaluable. You know, you can't get that kind of stuff out of a book. Correct. You know, you can see it on film, but unless you are out there and experience it, and you saw that linebacker creeping back, and you saw the safety creeping up when he was blitzing, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that, that he needs. you got to get comfortable. you got to get comfortable. So I, I would play him, and I would just be smart with the number of times that we're running him and talk to him about it. And I thought he did a good job of it last week, really. Okay, so Luke Getzey's getting... <clears throat> Uh, you know, I'm on social media, I do talk radio, and people are like, oh, well, I don't know about the play calling down the stretch. And I keep saying to people, he's got a busted shoulder. Maybe, not, maybe it's okay that he's out there. Luke's not going to be stupid. Right. Sorry you didn't like they ran it into the line with David Montgomery, but that's a fact. Yeah, that's no, that, that makes no sense. I mean, to me, at least. And the one play in a two-minute drill, when Justin kept the ball, he missed the handoff. To, to David Montgomery. Correct. Remember, he was supposed to hand the ball off, and it, it didn't happen for whatever reason. So that wasn't a called run. Correct. I mean, you, 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 no, I, I, I would. I don't lose sleep on that. I mean, it. Uh, uh, absolutely not. I don't want to get into any more. We don't have enough time. Okay. <laughs> the offensive line I thought played really oh, well against Green Bay. Really, like, much better up. than we've seen. Absolutely, we were dropping back against. Some first-round draft picks on that defense. And from, giving him time to throw. And, and giving him time to throw, Cap. You're exactly right. No, I'm, I'm – and we've been pleasantly surprised – not surprised. We've been pleasantly encouraged with the offensive line and their run blocks. Correct. I'll tell you what, the offensive line coach for the Bears, he's doing a heck of a job. Chris Morgan. Chris Morgan is really, you know, is bringing these guys along and um, – and Luke Getze, again, if you have a young, experienced, maybe not the most talented offensive line, what are you going to do? You want to run the ball. Get their confidence running the ball. Then you go play action. Then you go drop back. That's the smart way to do it. Correct. And that's what the Bears are doing. What do you, have you seen this year from Brisker? Because I think he's going to be a star. Yeah. Gordon I like, but I think Brisker's ahead of him. You, you know, when Brisker came out of Penn State, I, I watched him close. And he played safety, he played on the slot, he played linebacker. And I'm watching this kid and I'm saying, this is a guy that can do a lot. You know, and that's what we saw in the Bears. I think, what is he, tied for sacks? I mean, you hate to say that, you know, when your safety who's missed a couple games is, is tied for the leader in sacks. It is. it is what it is. But that just tells you, I bring that point up just to say that this guy is very versatile, and he's going to be a guy, as he gets experience, that they go out there and the offense walks up to the line and they say, hey, we got to know where Brisker's at. Where's Brisker? Where's Brisker? Because he's going to be doing a lot of things. When you were in Dallas and you guys had Aikman and all these guys, I feel like there was, there was obviously star power down there. I feel like the Bears need that, but that Justin has that quality. Like, We've got somebody special. Do you feel that way? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? Players like, like Justin, they can 
rise everybody, they can raise everybody else up a little bit, you know, and make everybody else play a little bit better. And that's what great players do. I mean, you know, Michael Jordan did that, right? Everybody around him elevated their game because of how he played. I mean, that's always been talked about. So I, I think that's going to happen with the Bears. And uh, uh, the, the key is to get more than one. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, the minute we get three or four of those guys on each side of the ball, now you got something. Bill Pullian says you need 10 to 12 blue chip guys if you truly want to contend to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Then you fill in around that. Interesting. Yeah. How many, how many of those guys do the Bears truly have? Well, I, th I think Brisker could be a blue chipper. Yeah. Br br it could, you just used a word that I don't like. Could be. Right. Okay. You know, but could He's be. He's a rookie. Yeah, it could be. Justin obviously is. Justin is. Uh, I wouldn't, I don't, I, we got to give this offensive line a little bit more time, you mm -hmm. know. I, I would think that, that Cody White here and I think David Montgomery would all be red players. And it goes blue-red, just for Correct. our viewers, you know. I, I think those guys are probably in the red category. Correct. Uh, we have one for sure blue. Yeah, one. Yeah, and, we, and our two corners and Eddie Jackson, you know, Eddie was probably, when he came that Pro Bowl year, he was a blue. No doubt. And now he, you know, and then last year he dropped on, I don't know what, now he's probably potentially. We got a lot of potential. He's red-blue. We get we red-blue. Let's, let's go red-blue, okay? So we got a lot of those type of guys. And, um, you know, all of a sudden you'll start winning, you get a little bit more talent, and, and, and those red players become blue players. Yeah, I hey, feel like. Hey, we went to the Super Bowl that first year at Dallas. We had the number one defense in the NFL in all categories, and we didn't have a Pro Bowl player on the starting lineup from the year ago. Really? Not one, Coach. Not one. And we were the youngest team in the National Football League. So, now, the, after we won the Super Bowl, we had about six Pro Bowl players. Now, you know, everybody's a superstar, That's right? That's it. All right, last thing. The day that you guys traded the Herschel Walker deal. Yep. Where were you? Do you remember, like, getting a call like we did what? Yeah, I was well, watching film on who we were getting ready to play and, knew, and knowing that we weren't going to be able to run the ball, so I better play some defense. Right. But we, we came about that trade on a jog coming back at lunchtime. We were, we were owing whatever. And we were talking about how are we going to get players, you know, and Jimmy John, we were saying this is not college where we get 25 number one picks like we had at Miami every year. Right. And uh, we talked about who on our team would other teams have interest in. And Troy had a no-cut clause in his contract. That was his first year. And, and we, Jimmy came to the conclusion the only other guy is Herschel Walker. And by 4 o'clock that night, he had Herschel traded. That's <laughs> unbelievable. And it... One Super Bowl. Yeah. Three number ones, three number twos, and three number threes. Pretty good. Pretty good. Have a great night. There you come.